I mean, together with the same value here. Now, that's all I'm going to say, because that's not my job. My job is to really show you how to calculate off-amp circuits. Like I said, if we had enough time, by the way, we go online, go into chat rooms that talk about this negative feedback system, it's actually really, really interesting. Not something that we will do in this course, but it's definitely worth mentioning. Okay? Here we go. So what I'm going to do here is that there are, you're going to see that there are multiple ways of solving circuits like this. You'll see. So there are three main ways to solve and what you're going to find here is by far my favorite and definitely the most powerful is simple circuit technique. And you're going to hear me say that <coughs> follow the current. And you're going to see sort of like Keep following what the current should be doing. And you know what the strange thing that we're going to do here is that you cannot apply KCL. And I'll show you in the reason why in a minute here. And the other technique, probably the most popular in most textbooks, without a doubt here, is node analysis. And I'm going to say, cannot use a uh, mesh. Because power supplies are ignored. Just ignore them. And if you don't know what the currents are in the, uh, from the power supply, what you're going to find here is that you're not going to be able to do it here. And then the third one here, there are some circuits that are worked with Thevenin and uh, equivalents here. Okay, so one of the things here, so if I expand on this thing, Remember what I said here. If I look at the op-amp circuit here, note that here, there's the power supplies. Here, there's the power supplies. But what are we doing to these power supplies? We're ignoring them. Right? If you're ignoring them, what you're seeing here is that I can't apply any KCL because there are currents here that are coming in. Right? There's currents from the sources. And because there's currents from the sources, right, these source currents, I can't really use KCL on the whole thing. And a very common thing here is people will say, like, I'll have a resistor right here, and I'll have another resistor right here. And they'll go like, oh, check this out. I could use KCL because the current's coming like this. And it's going like that because it's coming like that. And I'm going like, no. <laughs> you don't have these currents from the sources. So you don't know what's going through the ground. So this is a no-no. Cannot apply KCL. Now you can apply KCL within the circuit. But you cannot apply it like at the ground thing here. And that's a very, very common thing, especially when this ground <coughs> is connected like that. They'll go like, oh, this current's coming here. Look at it. Comes all the way around like that. And, you know, if you do that, I just want to thank you again. Right? <laughs> You're helping me with my grading, and I really appreciate that. Okay. 
So now that I'm encouraging you to do that, <laughs> let's move on here. So here we go. So what we want to do here, so if I was to sit, talk about some type of problem solving strategy, The, the strategies are quite simple here, right? The and I think, so what I would do here is that your whole job here, so if I was to say, what's your first step in this whole problem solving strategy here, is that you need to determine, you need to determine um, the output voltage which I typically write V out in terms of V1 and V2, which is really what? The input voltage. Now what you're going to find here is that, is that it's that this V1, okay, V1 is almost always going to be connected directly to V out. So you're really trying to write V1 in terms of V out. But you'll see that there are situations where V2 comes into play. And then what you do here is that what you're going to find in this case here, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, how do I write this thing here? This makes sense for the following reason. So if I look at V out, and I have A, and I have Vx, in order, um, if you look at this source here, let's say we have something like this. And this is equal to V out. Can I actually solve for V out? In, 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 a, in a circuit? Not really. Right? I can't write a voltage source in terms of <clears throat> simple circuit techniques or node analysis. I don't write <coughs> actual voltages in terms of that's not a node voltage right there. What is a node voltage? Vx. <clears throat> so Vx is a node voltage. V out is a power supply. So if you're using node analysis, you know what people will do? They'll, they'll, they'll call V out a node. So they'll write a node equation for V out. And like let me put it to you this way. If I have a 5 volt power supply, do you write that as a node? No. That's kind of a silly question, right? You're going like, what do you mean? No. That's a node. That's a node. I can write a super node equation for this node here and this node there, but I can never write a node equation for 5 volts. I can never write a known equation for V out because it's a power supply. So the only thing that I can solve for are the node voltages related to Vx. What's related to Vx? V1 and V2. Okay. So it's very common in the beginning for people to try to write that as a known equation. You can't. And it's because it looks like a node right there. But that's the value of the op amp. That is the power supply value. It just looks different. Okay? So in other words, what I'm saying here is that when you have this guy, cannot write as a node 
simple circuits here, the first thing that we'll do here is that I'm then going to go in and I'm going to apply the ideal conditions right away. So another step that I would do then, step two here would then be to the apply the uh, initial condition or the, the ideal, the ideal condition. What are the ideal conditions? Uh, V1 equal to V2 and I1, I2 equal to 0. So if I use node analysis, I write my node equations where I don't think about V out, then I write everything in terms of V1 and V2. And then I apply the ideal condition. This is an important step here. <clears throat> if you're going to use node equations, you do this first and then you do this second. And then, what you'll see here is that then, step three here would then be uh, <coughs> solve for V out and I out. What is I out? I out would be the current coming into the op amp. So this is sort of like the problem solving strategies for uh, node analysis for simple circuits, which I'll try to do node analysis as long as I can, and then you'll see that I'll just stop using it. It's just too much work. Simple circuits is far superior, in my opinion. You'll see that I'll immediately apply these conditions, and then I apply simple circuits. And all I'm doing is I'm just following where I think the current is going. Yes. I out goes into the bucket? Yeah, that's just a definition. Okay. A definition is that currents are positive if they flow into the node. That's the definition. Dude, I'm about to do examples, so I'm going to stop right here. So Monday, I hate to tell you that I'm picking up on this chapter. Okay. So I will be around, of course. <laughs>